Good morning and welcome to our almost daily devotional. Today, um, we're beginning the first reflection on our series, which will carry us through Lent. Now, technically, we have one more day till Lent begins. Today is Fat Tuesday, and I hope you have planned to have pancakes for dinner tonight, because it is pancake day. Um, but tomorrow, begin with Ash Wednesday, begins our season of Lent, which will carry us through Easter. And during this season of Lent at Concord, we're going to be talking about good grief. What does it mean to face the ends of things with hope and with trust in God? On Sunday, we're going to look at the first in our series, sermon series, and it's called Death and the Afterlife. So all of our um, scriptures this week will talk about what does the afterlife mean? What do Christians mean when they talk about the afterlife? Today's scripture is from John 14. It starts with the first verse and it goes like this. Don't be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. My father's house has room to spare. If that weren't the case, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? When I go to prepare a place for you, I will return and take you to be with me so that where I am, you will be too. You know the way to the place I am going. Thomas asked, Lord, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you have really known me, you will also know the Father. From now on, you know him and have seen him. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I will ask the Father and he will send another companion who will be with you forever. This companion is the spirit of truth, whom the world can't receive because it neither sees him nor recognizes him. You know him because he lives with you and I will be with you. I won't leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I, and because I live, you will live too. Now, we have a way in the church of making things more complicated than they need to be. And this passage is one of those passages we argue about all the time. What does it mean when Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life? Now, some Christians say that you have to, at some point, say, I believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You have to say those words in order to be saved. And other Christians say, well, no, Jesus has already saved you. Um, it's Jesus' act, not yours, so stop worrying about it so much. And the truth is that in this passage, nobody's really that concerned about what the destination looks like. Nobody's really concerned about whether they get to heaven or not, or what these houses look like, or where they're going. This passage is talking about people. This passage is talking about to whom will we go? To whom will we go? It's not about where we're going or what it's going to look like or what that's going to be like. It's about who's going to be there. Who's going to be there with us as we transition, as we go from death to life. And this passage reminds us that Jesus is to whom we go. Not where we go, but to whom we go. And that means that we already are living in the afterlife. We're already beginning to live into this life of with Godness. Jesus says, I will be with you. I will not leave you orphans. And so maybe we need to worry a little bit less about where we're going, a little bit more about who we are and who we will be with when we get there. Amen.